Today, I have three Pinot Noirs for you. They're all from the United States, and they're all under $15. Very affordable, and they're all relatively very easy to find at any of your local wine stores. So I'm gonna give them a try and see which one I like the most, which one I like the least, and if they're worth while drinking. Shall I begin with the intro real quick? Tasting, starting right now. I brought my wines in, I got my notebook and a pen so I can write stuff down, and I'm gonna start with wine A, B, and C, and you can always tell the wine by looking at the base right here, it's a little color-coded. So it's gonna be orange, black, and white in the order. So we're gonna start with wine A, shall we? Wine A, it's medium, ruby, it's very, very see-through. I can see through my hand, through the wine, and on the nose, it's medium and intensity. I get lots of floral characteristics like violet and rose. On the fruit side, I get cherry, raspberry, and slightly bit of earthy undertone going on in the background. Nicely, well done. And moving on to wine B. Wine B is also medium and ruby. However, it's a slightly darker color than the wine A. And on the nose, it's medium intensity. I get more of the fruit characters like cherry and raspberry. And I get a little bit of that Coca-Cola, that sweet on the nose, a little bit of herbal, a little bit of floral characteristics like eucalyptus and blossom. Not too bad either. Now, time for wine C. Let's give it a try. Wine C is my least favorite, medium ruby, similar to wine B, but a little bit more red. Uh, I think wine B was slightly darker. And on the nose, medium intensity, very, very slight levels of cherry and earthiness, but I get lots of nail polish or boot polish going on. And that is a sign of volatile acidity. And quite honestly, I'm not sure. It could be this particular bottle. It could be this particular batch. But as of right now, this is my least favorite, at least by the nose. But it could be different in the palate. So we're gonna move on to wine A. Let's taste them, shall we? Wine A is quite straightforward in a very good way. Uh, whatever I got on the nose, I got it in my palate. I got medium plus on the acidity, medium minus on the tannins, and medium on the finish. I get lots of cherry, raspberry, earthy characteristics like gravel. I get lots of floral and herbal characteristics in the background like eucalyptus and dried herbs, that kind of stuff. So very, very well made. And knowing the price is under $15, this is really good. I like it a lot. Now it's time to move on to Wine B. Wine B is actually not that bad. Similar to last one, but just different characteristics. I get medium on acidity, medium minus on tannin, medium on the finish. And on the palate, I get cherry, raspberry, lots of dried herbs in the background, a little bit of earthiness. It's really, really well made. I like it as well. This is pretty good too. Yeah, not bad at all. I like it. Now lastly, Wine C. Wine C still, unfortunately, maintains to be my least favorite out of all the three. Uh, medium minus in acidity, medium minus in tannin, and pretty short in finish. And I only get cherry and a little bit of herbs characteristics, but it's very pushing for me to even write it down. And then I get lots of nail polish or boot polish or characteristics. It's either just poorly made wine or it's flawed wine. Uh, it could be this particular bottle, it could be a particular batch, or this particular entire case or whatever. Would I recommend this wine? Not really. Um, even though if this were to be this particular batch or bottle kind of thing, I still can't taste or smell underlying dense core grape for it to overcome whatever the flaw it has. So on that sense, I'll give this wine a big no-go. However, the wine A and B right here, the orange and the black one, it was really good. My wine verdict is avoid wine C, but wine A and B, I think they're both pretty good. I think a lot of you is gonna like wine A, but if you want more of that gravelly, earthy characteristics, wine B would be a better choice for you. So I think that basically sums it up. Uh, I'm gonna ask my wife to bring some bottles and let's see which wine is which, shall we? White. This is white, this is white. Orange. I got the wines here. Let's open it up and see which one's which. Now, my A and B was my favorite wine, C being the least. So I'm gonna open up with 
A and B first, C being the last. So let's open up with wine A and see which one it is. Ba da ba ba! Ooh, what is it? Uh, where's the label? There you go. Kirkland Pinot Noir Caneros Napa Valley 2020. Very, very well made. I liked it a lot. And wine B. Ba da ba ba! Robert Mondavi. Wow. Pinot Noir 2019, California. And lastly, Wine C. Vineyard Reserve, Samuel Robert Winery, Pinot Noir 2020. I didn't like it that much at all. Wine C, the Samuel Robert Winery. I picked this because this was labeled at number one at Total Wine. Now, like I said, it could have been this bottle, but I didn't like this wine at all because it just flawed with nail polisher and boot polisher, lots of volatile acidity, not a good choice. $15. I mean, out of all three, this is the most expensive one. So it should have been delivered the most, but it didn't. It delivered the least. So that says something about the $10 wine right here, the Kirkland Pinot Noir. Lately, the Kirkland wine's been just superb. It's, it's amazing quality for what you pay, and it shows again in Pinot Noir. It showed in Napa Valley one in last week's, and it showed again in Pinot Noir. So pretty darn good wine. Go give it a try. And surprisingly, the Robert Mondavi Private Selection Pinot Noir 2019. This is $8. Killer wine again for the price. Not bad at all. I like it. Go give this a try and let me know what you guys think, all right? There has to be a reason why this wine got number one at Total Wine. This, and it's not by like Total Wine themselves, it's by the actual drinkers. I had relatively high expectation to become like similar to like the Kirkland one, but it didn't deliver at all. So I hope this is a bottle thing or batch issue, not a wine issue as a whole. Just go buy these. It's Manipulation is almost zero to none. They left the grape alone, and I'm happy with that. So, that is all for today. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. What do you guys think of these wines? Alrighty, thanks.